This is where Britain's nursing crisis is being solved, in the Philippines. 14,000 nurses were recruited in the past year alone. More come from here than anywhere else. But it's a country still racked by some of the worst poverty on earth. In places there's little or no healthcare system at all, and the mass exodus of highly trained nurses is cutting deeply into what remains. These nurses are not always just general. Many of them are highly skilled specialists. And yet we've been told of, for example, burns units or intensive care wards, which have lost not just one or two members of their staff, but entire nursing teams. But the Philippine government is willing to sacrifice its badly needed health care provision in return for the even more desperately needed hard currency the nurses send home from abroad. Yet what seemed like a win-win situation, the Philippines needs the money, we need the nurses, is now beginning to go very wrong. Almost overnight, it spawned an industry of recruitment companies who are creaming off large sums of money and double-charged fees and dubious expenses, not only from the nurses, but also the British hospitals and the Philippine economy itself. We've been receiving complaints like um, collection of excessive fees, uh, that, that is the placement fees, also contract violation, some acts of harassment and since this is very new very new market uh, we want to immediately uh, study right away the causes of the problems in britain the union unison is now receiving more than 30 complaints a week from filipino nurses it's in no doubt about where the problem lies i think a lot of blame has to be set at the door of the recruitment companies the agencies um, they're exploiting the situation and there's no doubt about that we need to see the government taking a closer look at these agencies um, and ensuring that there is no potential for this type of exploitation maria teresa not her real name was one of 90 nurses recruited last year for saint george's hospital in south london but her delight rapidly turned to shock when she was charged £2,000 in fees and expenses. It's painful in, your, in, in my case that, oh my lord, I need to pay this certain amount just to work abroad. And I don't even know what's the type of job I'll be with in abroad. Maria Teresa was recruited in Manila by this firm, World Care International. We sent two nurses undercover to see how the process works. Worldcare was obviously proud of its association with St. George's. The agency's president, Lenny Pasqua, told them that they would have to pay fees up front of about £1,200. Under current Filipino law, she is allowed to charge a fee of one month's UK starting salary. But Maria Teresa earned far less when she arrived here. If, if she is allowed by the Philippine government to charge us one month salary, she should only charge us less than 700 pounds because that's the amount, that's the pay that we we'll receive during our first couple of months. After paying the full amount, Maria Teresa was horrified to discover that some of the money that she paid went to covering the hotel bill of the British recruiter when he came to Manila. This uh, hotel accommodation is quite high, considering how many nurses would be funding this. 5,000? Because uh, sometimes uh, the uh, hotel accommodation is not only in the three-star, we are also book uh, him at the, the you know, five-star hotel. I feel cheated and it's very, very unfair on our part because when we apply for this job, we did not, we did not, we, we, we don't want, we don't want them, we don't want them to stay in five-star hotel if we are thinking that we will be the one to pay for it. We'd rather stay them in a dormitory or in a boarding house. It's cheaper because if we know that we, we are the one to pay for this, well, you could stay in my house, it's free in there. This is the Philippines government agency tasked with protecting almost a million Filipino contract workers going abroad each year. And this is the director of their adjudication office who investigates rogue recruiters. If this refers to the hotel accommodation, the food in the uh, UK. No, here in the Philippines. In the Philippines, this is not allowed. Most of these are for me and for George. Representatives. Representatives. 
So, so Mr. Cherimoto, for instance, is paid for it. When he comes here, I do because the nurses pay his hotel bill. Not the nurses, from, from me, from me, because that is the placement fee. I advance, I advance our expenses. But who paid the placement fee? The nurses. Worldcare is jointly accredited with this Coventry-based agency, Trustmore. When we tried to speak to its managing director, George Cherimoto, he was reluctant, but he did issue this statement. I pay for my own hotel and other expenses whilst in the Philippines. Either Mrs. Pasqua is lying, or you are misquoting her. St. George's said they believed the fee of £1,500 per nurse that they'd paid Trustmore covered all pre-recruitment costs in Manila, and that there was no question the nurses should have been charged. They added they do not intend to use Trustmore in the future. But the Philippine government is now so concerned that its nurses are being exploited, it's revising its regulations to make it harder for Filipino agencies to rack up unfair fees. And they can, and do, suspend agencies if they suspect they're abusing the system. We feel that we should not allow them to operate while we are investigating this case. So they are on uh, preventive suspension right now. Channel 4 News has learned that two out of three suspended are perhaps the biggest players in the market. ADD of Manila and Drake International of London are under suspension while the Philippine government investigates an alleged scam involving dozens of faked contracts. In 1999, 130 nurses were recruited to work in a Surrey NHS hospital. Although neither the nurses nor the hospital knew it, the conditions of work did not meet the Philippine government's minimum requirements. The nurses' starting salary was too low and they had to pay their own airfares. After we have picked to go, it took us a year before we deployed here in the UK and they told us there's something wrong with our papers. Gilbert and 41 other nurses are alleging that the agencies were not willing to lose NHS business, thereby risking hundreds of thousands of pounds in recruitment fees. So instead of asking the hospital to meet the minimum requirements, they merely switched contracts, ensuring the nurses were able to leave the Philippines for the UK. Gilbert now feels shortchanged, knowing that his starting salary should have been much higher. The hospital says it had nothing to do with what they call the bogus contract and are astonished that their genuine offer was unacceptable. Both ADD and Drake vehemently deny faking contracts. But when we sent our nurses undercover to ADD's offices, we found little evidence they were complying with their suspension. They were given this leaflet advertising immediate interviews with three NHS trusts and told to take their place in the queue behind dozens of other nurses hoping to come to the UK. We showed this evidence to the government adjudicator, Jaime Jimenez. Are they allowed to be doing that? Uh, they're not uh, allowed to do that because they, uh, their license is under suspension. Can I confirm that you will be investigating this further? Yes, uh, we have uh, uh, units here operating to conduct uh, surveillance at the same time with your uh, presentation of this, then we will have to conduct a spot inspection. We found ADD President Emiliano Chiano at this Manila Bay Hotel. He would not comment on the bogus contract because of the ongoing investigation, but he said that although ADD was suspended, he thought there was nothing wrong in interviewing recruits. Do these hospitals know that you can't actually send them nurses at this stage of the game? I think so. I think uh, Drake, has, uh, Drake has, uh, has informed them that. But that's not what the trusts told us. Two denied knowledge of the suspensions and one said they'd only been told there was a little local difficulty. In fact, staff from one of the hospitals was even in Manila as we were speaking to ADD at some considerable expense to themselves. Tony Blair's magic figure of 20,000 new nurses by 2004 can only be achieved by continuing to take nurses from the Philippines. And the British government is in the process of drawing up new guidelines on international recruitment. But we have been told there's been no consultation with the Philippines government. And that's clearly what now needs to happen, so rogue agencies in both countries can be put out of business.
I want this process sort of situation to stop because if this will not be stopped if this process of recruitment will continue could you imagine a lot of Filipinos will suffer